With me right now is Dr. Ellie Farinini, live via Zoom from Italy. I wish you were here in Chicago, but I want to say congratulations, bravissimo. You are, of course, the 2020 Banting Medal Award recipient for scientific achievement. Well done. I want to take you back to your original interest in insulin resistance, and I want you to think about where we have come. Well, when I started, which is uh, a number of years ago that I'm not uh, happy to, um, to recall, um, insulin resistance was the hot topic. Uh, following uh, in the steps of the likes of Gerald Reeven and uh, Ralph de Franzo, uh, there was a lot of interest in the First of all, in the methodology to assess, to quantitate insulin resistance at the whole body level. There was a lot of interest in the mechanisms. There was a lot of interest in the sites of, of, of insulin resistance. So for a young investigator, it was very attractive to uh, learn the technique, which I adopted, the euglycemic clamp technique, and start doing work in insulin resistance. So many know that you clearly played a role in advancing knowledge, but from your perspective, in what ways? <laughs> I wish I knew exactly in what way, but I think that the contribution that I made was to confirm the presence and significance of insulin resistance in states of uh, glucose intolerance, uh, all the way from impaired glucose tolerance to avert type 2 diabetes. And following that, I have looked at the uh, interventions that can modify insulin resistance. And one contribution that um, sort of optimistically I can think of having made here is the lesson that has been learned from bariatric surgery. Uh, after bariatric surgery, after losing some 40 kilos of body weight, you can retrieve uh, a lot of insulin sensitivity and also beta cell function, uh, which was kind of relearning the lesson that the game is not over in terms of improving the pathophysiology of diabetes in patients with established long-term disease. Changing people's lives. So where do you see us going from here in terms of our understanding of insulin in the body? The, there still is the need for a direct treatment, pharmacological if not lifestyle, because lifestyle does work, but it's uh, quite difficult to implement and to maintain over time. So that's where it may still be going. In addition, of course, to um, describing in detail the cellular physiology and the cellular biology of insulin resistance and its links with other diseases, diseases, for example, hypertension, but also um, cardiovascular disease. You bring up bariatric surgery patients. Clearly, the knowledge impacts people. And so let's talk about what the advancements have meant for them in terms of their lives and their quality of life. Oh, it's, it's a huge improvement. I must say that not being a surgeon uh, I was not particularly enthusiastic about bariatric surgery when we started to work um, in the area. But having seen the clinical impact of bariatric surgery, and I'm talking about um, patients who are at a point of really irreversibility and the uh, quality of life of, uh, of these patients when they are accurately selected and when one is cognizant of the predictive factors for the success of bariatric surgery, the quality of life can be improved to an incredible extent. Those patient outcomes have to be so satisfying for you, and I imagine it's also enriching for you to have your work recognized. What does this mean to you? Well, um, you know, in, in, in a career, you either go for money or you go for this kind of recognition if you are ambitious. Now, me and Mani have always had a problem with one another, so um, this is um, a big deal for me. Also being the 
the first Italian to uh, be awarded the Banting Medal. There always has to be a first person. It is well deserved. So one last question for you, and that is, what's on the horizon? Uh, the big problem that is still out there is obesity. Because obesity still is the major risk factor for the diabetes tsunami that we are witnessing, particularly in emerging um, economies. So um, otherwise, um, you know, artificial intelligence is helping, particularly in type 1 diabetes. So there are very interesting developments in terms of the pharmacology, the knowledge, and the uh, implementation of strategies to improve the quality of life of patients with diabetes. Looking forward to the future and your continued research. Dr. Ellie Ferranini, thank you so much. Grazie, ciao. Grazie, ciao.